What do insanely poor people buy that ordinary people know nothing about? Lots of school systems do free lunches for kids under 18 during the summer. When I was a kid I remember my dad taking us to get lunch at the school then go play disc golf, soccer, or do something else free and fun. It was a blast and I had no clue it was because we were poor. Dollar theaters. And sometimes they have a free afternoon evening show for kids with the purchase of a parent ticket. Many movies were seen by the three of us for four dollars with a shared popcorn and coke. My dad was amazing at making us feel rich on basically nothing. I have been both very poor and very comfortable. A lot of very true statements already posted here. But here's what I have noticed. When you are broke. You can't plan ahead or shop sales or buy in bulk. Poor people wait to buy something until they absolutely need it. So they have to pay whatever the going price is at that moment. If 10 packs of paper towels are on sale for half price. That's great. But you can only afford one roll anyway. In this way. Poor people actually pay more than others for common staple goods. My office only has a unisex bathroom so it has the facilities for men and women. Naturally there's a tampon machine. And tampons are only 5 cents. Once a month I'll work late. Get a roll of nickels and fill up a grocery sack with tampons for my wife. You can get new car parts from the junkyard for virtually nothing. With added discounts if you remove them from the junkers yourself. I had a 12 year old car in college and when it blew a tire. I went to the junkyard and found a decent set of tires. Bought all 4 for $70. Which reduced my food budget to $16 for the next 2 weeks. Some lady in the grocery store saw me with a calculator trying to figure out how much ramen I could buy with $16 and handed me a $20. It made me cry. I'm glad I'm not poor anymore. But I'll always remember that lady. Close bracket. When I was child. Burger King ran a special kids meal where it was too many burgers that were attached to each other like a weird conjoined burger experiment. Sometimes we would go. My dinner was one. Five of the mini burgers. My mom's dinner was the half I didn't eat and she would fill up on the free refills of soda. I was so poor once that I would go to Long John Silver's and order a water and crunchies, which used to be free, then sit there and watch the people that would dine in. It was amazing how little they ate. And then they would leave without dumping their tray off in the trash. Fries. Hush puppies. Chicken. Fish. All untouched. No I didn't eat a piece that was bitten off of. I once saw a woman order a two piece fish and more for her kid. That ate one hush puppy and a few fries. And then left the rest of it there. It was the best I had eaten in weeks. Glad that's behind me now. Powdered milk. I once worked in a call center and an old lady called almost in tears that cable went up by $1. 50. Her line that she repeated more than once was that she couldn't afford fresh milk and had to buy powdered milk. Unless it's due to a lack of refrigeration available or some sort of allergy. Only the very poor would buy powdered over fresh milk. I knew a guy that would go to a livestock feed store and buy antibiotics and some other meds there that were meant for farm animals when he got sick. There was another med he'd get at pet stores too. He'd just cut the pills into smaller pieces to try to guess what the proper mg amount was. It's apparently crazy cheap for certain meds and doesn't require a prescription or guffed oversight like it would at a normal pharmacy. I had a really odd childhood. Until age 9 my family would have been classed as upper middle class. Then my father left and my mum went batshit crazy. From 9 to 18 we were dirt poor. I remember being 10 years old and our weekly treat was to go to the Littlewoods cafe. I think they went bust, and they did a 99 page 5 piece breakfast. We shared that among my mum, brother, sister, and me. One of us got the extra item. We'd take turns. As an adult I have made sure my children will never know poverty because of excellent memories like that. Nothing motivates you more than memories of fighting over a solitary sausage. Rent to own furniture. Growing up my family had its moments of struggle. Our public transport system at the time had tickets which were simply hole punched with the date and month. Not the year. 
so we save them and store them neatly in envelopes marked by month and concession or full fare. After a few years of saving tickets we pretty much had free train and bus travel for the next 10 years. Until they changed the ticketing system to electronically stamped tickets with barcodes. Handfuls of ketchup packets from McDonald's. Learning the times of the day when meat, bakery, fish, vegetable and miscellaneous items are reduced to 75% at the local supermarket. I've been learning for years. But it's a good day when you find 400 grams of fresh mints for 99p. And you have warm filling food that you used to take for granted when living with parents. One thing I've noticed about being poor is that you become almost vegetarian because meat just costs too damn much. Frozen or fresh. Another thing would be buying the cheapest large container of yogurt. And mixing in jam for fruity yogurt. But that's not about being poor. That's just a good idea. Rotten bananas. Stale bread. Grey meat. And anything else the grocery is about to toss in the garbage. Giant bags of rice. Beans. Grain. Or flour. Canned vegetables. Dried milk. Stuff on layaway. My mom would always go to this store that sold heavily discounted irregulars and put it on layaway for our new school clothes. At home surgery. Used a pair of needle nose pliers. A razor blade and some antiseptic super glue to remove a cyst on my forehead. The secret is to cut it in a cat's eye shape. Quickly push the skin back after you pull the cyst out, don't let it pop, and get the glue on fast. Burn like 10 bitches on a bee boat. But it bleeds a lot and you have to get it on quick to stop the bleeding. Lottery tickets. Extended stay housing or motels hotels. When you can't qualify to get an apartment because you don't have proof of income. You end up wasting more money to stay for a week at extended day housing or a cheap motel. It sucks as having no home being a transient. I promise myself never to be in the same situation again. I don't have an answer to your question OP. But I no longer feel that I am having serious money problems after reading some of the comments you have generated through this post. In fact. I feel like a lot of Reddit would hate me after hearing what I thought my problems were. It really is very humbling to see all of this. I'll go ahead and put my answer. Cheap meat. You don't know how bad Spam and Vienna weenies taste till you have them for breakfast. Lunch. Afternoon snack. And dinner. I just learned this from a teenage burglar a couple years ago. Baseball caps with a completely straight brim and a sticker still on it were made popular because inner city kids wanted to prove they could afford brand new name brand things. It's kind of sad that's how some trends start. I have a friend who while growing up. A treat with him and his sister sharing one slice of pizza. This is in Nick. Micro loans. I know a really poor family that buys loads of candles to light their home at night so that they don't have to pay for electricity. It makes me sad. Having worked in a dollar store. 1. Dollar store steaks. Seriously steaks for 1 dollar. If that doesn't sound sketchy I don't know what does too. This is also a Hispanic thing I noticed. Fabulazo. That stuff cleans everything. I had no clue what it was till I grabbed a busted bottle to clean the bathroom one day. 3. You get real used to pasta and rice also. They are cheap and can be bought in bunches. 4. Every buy 2 sandwiches from Subway cause a third is free. Coupons like this go a long way. My last thing I noticed and this is pretty bad. The dollar store's toilet paper is seriously better than the toilet paper my mom buys. Banquet meals. Absolute garbage. Salt filled crap that I wouldn't feed to starving dogs in the pound. Sacrificing my plate of food to feed my little brother and three little sisters whilst my mom gave up her food. As did I. I was 10. All while my obese abusive stepdad ate steak and brussels sprouts. Less mom got beat. Luckily. He is dead. Mom's somewhat stable. And I'm 17 saving up money right now. But that's one thing I fear being. I don't want to be hungry or unable to provide. 
I just remember telling my mom that I'm hungry. Her breaking down and crying. Luckily. I had a best friend that I used to go to and bring leftovers from across the street back over. It's not about what you buy it's about what you can make or substitute. Can't afford to run the gas to run the stove and want french toast. Toast the bread on the barbecue grill melt some butter and sprinkle cinnamon sugar on it. Can't afford real spaghetti. Mix some tomato soup and butter. Heat till warm. Pour over some ramen. You have yourself perman spaghetti. You will be surprised what you can get for almost free at garage sales. Or online. DR. Thunder. That isn't even comparable to the delicious taste of the cool crisp. 23 flavors of a DR. Pepper. I'm a gas station dude in a small midwestern town and regularly I am asked by some of our clientele if we sell cigars in glass tubes. Typically. They are uninterested in the cigar. They prefer the tubes to smoke substances that need high heat to become effective. TLDI glass cigar tubes for meth. Heroin. Or crack. Check cashing services. I count it as a buy because it costs money to cash your paycheck there. And you need an account at the check cashing place. Which costs money to get to. Of course you can't go to the bank because you got blacklisted after Bank of America Ray ordered your debit card charges and took $1,100 in fees from you that you didn't have. And then forced your account in the red with low balance fees and took you to collections. Congress had to pass a law to stop this, and now you can't get a normal bank anywhere. Because BOA blacklisted you. Shame nobody bailed out all the people that the banks did that to after they passed the law. Huh.